Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to create a multiple level navigation bar or another word for it would maybe be a cascading menu or drop down nav bar. There's as many names for them as there are methods for creating them. So something which works something like this. Which pretty common request, something I've been meaning to do for a long time, but I'm going to do it. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward through the part where I create just the single level list or what you're looking at on the page right now. I'm still going to record it. I'm just going to fast forward through it because I imagine if you're watching this video, you want to cut to the chase. But I also do want to accommodate those of you who are starting from scratch. Because kind of making the CSS fit your HTML is always a challenge. So I'm going to give you the process as well, but I'm going to fast forward through it. So no narration, just getting it done. So I'll see you in a couple minutes, and then we'll start getting to the uh, cascading part, right? That part. So I've started off with just my little boilerplate here, and then from here, I'm just going to write some HTML and CSS. So see you on the other side. All right, so here we are. I think I didn't validate that at all, so it probably works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk through what I did, which I think is a valid activity to do. My color scheme, let's not worry about that. Um, all right, so here's just my, I used a nav tag, which is similar to just a div with an ID of nav. Let's look at my uh, CSS. For those of you who are relatively new to this, which is probably most of you. So here I did a reset rule. So this sets the default padding and margin of everything to zero. This is actually quite important when you're talking about a multi-level list. If you don't do that, I don't know how your results are going to turn out. Oftentimes you get these weird offsets. So this right here, so I just took my div, which encompasses my nav bar. I gave it an explicit height. I gave it an explicit width. And so the reason I give it a width is so I could center it. And when you want to center a nav bar or any other element, you really are just setting the margins. And so this is a shorthand. This means, hey, on top, zero margins, top and bottom. On the left and right, auto, which means basically, I don't care how big the screen is. Whatever's on the left and the right, I want them to be the same width. So that's just centering the nav bar. These are the list items themselves. So list items inside of a list. This means they're going to be aligned from left to right. They have an explicit width. This gets rid of the bullets. This centers the text. Uh, horizontally, this centers the text vertically. This gives it a background color other than white. This right here is addressing the anchor tags inside of the list items. Um, so this gets rid of the underline on the links, and this makes the entire element a link instead of just the text. This right here means that when we hover over an anchor tag, it's going to turn ABC color, which means that kind of bluish thing, right? And there is your single level list. So if that's what you're looking for, I have another video on that for the rest of you. Let's nest this thing. All right, so believe it or not, the more technical part of this process is the HTML, which is never the case. So if you want a multiple level list, then we're going to need to put a list inside of a list. And more specifically, we're going to put a list inside of a list item. So notice this list item starts right here. Uh, and this anchor tag ends right here. So I'm going to position my cursor, right? So after the ending anchor tag and before the ending list tag. And I'm going to press enter a couple times. All right, so this looks strange because I've got this hanging closing list item, right? And notice it opens and closes here. So here's how this works. Inside of that list item, I'm going to insert a list, an unordered list more specifically, right? And that looks weird. 
Right, so inside of this list item, I'm doing a list. So it's after the anchor, but it's still inside the list. And inside of that list, I'm gonna create a list item and I'm gonna close that list item. Inside of that list item, I'm going to open an anchor tag and I'm going to close an anchor tag. Uh, that anchor tag, let me just give it a target of nothing. So I'm gonna create a dummy link. And that anchor tag needs some text. So I'll say like item 1A. Now, since I'm using Notepad++, I'm gonna use my good friend Control D to duplicate because these are kind of nested and easy to make mistakes on. So I've now created a list with inside of a list item. Uh, I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. I think it's probably what you would expect. When I reload this, I get that, which isn't quite what I'm going for, but you can see I've got a list inside of a list item, which is weird and I don't know if I like it, but that's how it works. So just because this is the hard part here, let me do it one more time. So how about let's say we want uh, item two to drop down as well. So I'm gonna position my cursor after the closing anchor tag, but before the closing list item tag. Enter a couple times, tab on down, create a new list, give myself a little room, close that list. Inside of that list, I'm going to create a list item, close that list item. Inside of that list item, I'm going to open I'll just do the dummy link thing now and close that anchor tag. Give it a little text like item 2a. I'm going to do a little control D here, duplicate. And so now I've got two list items, both with nested lists inside of them. I'll show you what that looks like. It's pretty predictable. All right, so I'm telling you what we've done so far is valid HTML, but that is not a multi-level list. That is a junk show. Right, like you could imagine, this takes it. This is taking a good chunk of my page. So how do we fix that? Well, the good news is, this is the HTML. Now we just need to address the presentation. And so when we're going to address presentation, we do that with CSS. And so there's only two rules I'm going to need here, which is pretty incredible. There's so many people on the internet making tutorials and videos showing you how complicated this needs to be. It doesn't need to be complicated. So the first thing we need to do is we need to hide those nested lists. So I'm going to create a rule for that. So writing a selector to address those nested lists is a little bit it's non-trivial. So if I wanted to do that, I'd say that would be my selector. That's how I like to write it. There's a million ways you can write it. This means every unordered list inside of a list item. Right? This is an unordered list inside of a list item. So this selector is going to get right to the point. And I just have a single property here, display none right and that might be the first time you've ever seen that that just means hide it there's a lot of ways to hide things that's how I like to hide them and I'll show you what that looks like if I refresh this page right much cleaner but the problem is all those lists are now hidden permanently which isn't quite what we wanted we kind of just took a big step back but we also took a step forward so that's good so what I need to do similar to the way I use this pseudo class right here this hover state I'm going to use a hover state to make those things display on hover. So I only want this list to show up when you're hovering over this list item. Okay, so writing that's a little bit difficult. So I'm going to write it like this. So what this means is every time you hover over a list item, I want to do something to the lists inside of it. Notably, I want to display block, which is kind of like the opposite of display none, it means hey, display it again. Let me save that, show you what it looks like. Right, and who would have thought that just with two rules, none of them overly complex, you can put together a drop down navigation bar. That's kind of a weird selector, so it's probably the first time you've ever seen that. That's a pseudo class or pseudo state. Typically, you only see hover attached to anchor tags, but you can use pseudo states on any element. Uh, there was a time when you couldn't, but uh, this is certainly valid. So every time you hover over a list item, I want to display the uh, items inside. So that's all you need to do, right? That was not a lot of CSS. And if you look at what a lot of people do for tutorials, it's nothing like that. 
The harder part was actually creating a well-formed uh, multi-level list down here. But really, that's all you need to do. And from here, from this point forward, you could uh, do a lot of things. Like one of the things I did in my example is I made the second level items highlight to a different color. So let's do that. And there's a million modifications we could make from this point. But let's practice that kind of uh, inheritance model, uh, child selector kind of thing. So if I wanted to style the second level links, I would write that selector like this. How about uh, L-I-U-L-A hover. What this is going to do, this means when you hover over an anchor, which is inside of a list, which is inside of a list item, which is another way of saying nested items. Let's do something like a, a background. I guess we'll do that. And I'm kind of just winging it here. This is not going to look good, but I wouldn't. I would argue that nothing I've done looks good so far. That's okay. So if I load this up, notice that now the second level items highlight to a different color. Is that better? I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. So here's what I'm going to say. At this point, if you've got some things that would you'd like to do to this list, I'm going to save this file. And if you guys want some short videos on how to apply some modifications to this list, then leave some questions in the comments and I'll do the best I can to address those. But really, at this point, we have created our drop-down list, which was the purpose of the video. Everything from this point forward is just gravy or whipped topping on your ice cream or sprinkles on your sundae or um, icing on the cake.